Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. I'm here today with Roland's brand new FP-E50. And this is a bargain. It's less than $1,000. It's $999. And you get a lot for your money with this. So let's go through this and find out what makes this such a bargain. First of all, when you're looking at a digital piano or a stage piano or portable piano or whatever you want to call it, basically this blurs the line between all of those. So it is a digital piano. It is a portable piano. It has speakers. It is a stage piano. It has 1,018 different sounds to it. And it is a basically a one-man band type of thing because it has accompaniments and styles to it. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck right off the bat right there. Let's dive into this and find out more. First of all, it's 88 keys, fully weighted, graded hammer action. It's Roland's PHA-4 standard action. It's been around a long time. It's very well established, so no problem there. And it has escapement and ivory feel. Now, the speakers that are here, they're four and three quarter inch round, left and right. And they're down firing instead of up firing. So it might take a little bit of getting used to that, but it does fill up the room. The sound from that fills up the entire room. And they're 11 watts each, total of 22 watts. Now there's two sound engines to this. There's Roland's Supernatural sound engine, which we all know about. It sounds great. And there's Roland's Zencore sound engine. And the reason Zencore is such a big deal is because you can bring in more sounds to this keyboard than it already has. If you have a friend with another Roland keyboard that has also Zencore capability, something like the RD88 or Roland's new Phantom or a few other different keyboards, you can take those and bring it into this. How cool is that? Or you can go to RolandCloud.com and bring in sounds from there. You can create sounds with it on your own and bring it into here. How cool is that? So unlike other keyboards that are in this price range where you go out and buy it and what the sounds that are built in, you're stuck with those for life. Not so with this. Yeah, you've got the sounds that you're that's built into this, 1,018 of them, but you can also bring in more, so you are not limited in any way. Now, if you take a look over here, there's five different sound categories labeled piano, e-piano, strings, organ slash pad, and other. The sounds that are built into these categories, the piano category alone has 38 different sounds, including supernatural sounds and other sounds. The electric piano section has 34 sounds. Strings have 36 sounds. Organ slash pad has 184 sounds. And the other category, which is synth and that kind of thing, has 728 sounds. Of those, 74 are drum sets, and that's where also your Zen core sounds will be going to or added to. Now, it comes with the keyboard. It comes with the AC adapter, of course. Rowan's DP2 pedal, which is basically an on-off switch. It's a cheap little box pedal on-off. So when it's on, your foot is pressing on it, you're sustaining, and when it's off, you're not sustaining. So, and I'm gonna lift my foot up and the sound is gone. I would recommend going to Rowan's DP10, which is a more professional pe uh, pedal. It is a damper pedal, but it also has half dampering. So listen to this. If you were using the DP2 and you lift your foot off, it's gone. With the DP10, which is what I'm using right now, as I lift up slowly, it's a gradual thing. So I can control the amount of damper or sustain with that. Highly recommend you go that upgrade route, the Roland DP-10. 
They also work with a few other damper pedals, but make sure you get a universal pedal if you're going to go that route. That just means it has a switch on there. So if you're playing without the pedal down and it's coming out like this, flip the switch and it comes out the right way. Also comes with a music rest that goes over here, as well as a quick start guide. As for the user manual, which is quite thorough, it's about 80, 85 pages or so, that you can download from the Roland website. Optionally, you can get a few different options. You can get a furniture style stand with this Roland's KSFE50. And if you do that, you can get a pedal board for that, which has three pedals to it. You know, the, the sostenuto, the soft pedal, and the uh, damper pedal. So three in a row, also known as LCR or left, center, right, because you can program those to be whatever you want. So you'll need that optional furniture style stand in order to get that pedal board also optional. And as, as I mentioned, the Roland DP-10 half damper pedal. Or you can even get the uh, Roland EV5 Expression pedal. But unfortunately, the way this is laid out, you can only have one at a time. And, and we're not talking about the pedal board with three, but to add your own pedal, whether it's Roland's DP10 or EV5 or whatever, you can only choose one of those. It's only got one jack. And again, like I said, uh, Stage Piano is an arranger. It has sampled and synthesizer tones. You can use this as a one-man band. It's going to play along with you. It's got an interactive mode. We're going to go through all of that stuff in this video. Uh, it's for singers, songwriters, and more. Now, it also has Bluetooth audio, not MIDI. Um, I believe the manual says it does, but I think that's going to be implemented at a future date. As of right now, it's just Bluetooth audio. If you want MIDI, you've got USB MIDI. So you're all set there. You can hook that up to your computer, your DAW, whatever. Now, a lot of um, Roland's pianos are compatible with their piano app. This one is not. The piano designer is actually built into here. So let me skip ahead of myself and go into that. So as you'll see over here, we're going to go up to piano designer, hit enter. And this is what I got here, the piano designer right away. You'll see the lid, a little graphic there for the lid, and it is on number four right now. You can have that lid closed or open anywhere from one to 10. Listen to the differences. That's with four. If I have it all the way up to six, or if I have it closed, So the default, I believe, is four, and it seems to be a good place to be. All right, then you have resonance. You've got string resonance, damper resonance, key off noise, and cabinet. You can control that all here. And also tuning and volume and character. And we're talking about per key isn't that cool so if you go to tuning you choose which key by hitting the key and then make your adjustments this is the graph for what the 88 keys are right now now let me go back and let's go to volume you got a key that maybe is a little lower than you want or a little higher or you want to emphasize a key this is where you go to the volume you choose which key and then you adjust the volume accordingly and the same thing with character so right off the bat you're doing stuff here that most other pianos don't have that is so cool so first let's go through the uh, the back panel then the front panel and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of things so on the back panel from my right to my left will be your left to right you've got the AC adapter that's where you plug that into the wall and into the keyboard. You've got the USB A and B jacks. You've got left and right quarter inch lineouts, which is really cool. It's not one of these keyboards where you just have a, 
a jack that's like a headphone jack, and then you're supposed to get an adapter cable and divide that into left and right for your PAs or front of house or whatever. No, nope, this has the proper jacks right there. Quarter inch. I really like that. Also has an eighth inch stereo input jack or aux in or even line in. And then you have a gain control for your mic and the mic is a quarter inch mic input jack. Then you have your pedal jack, which I just mentioned briefly in the beginning. Quarter inch pedal jack. You can put the included DP2 in there or the optional DP10 or an expression pedal. And again, unfortunately, there's just one of those. So choose wisely. With me, I'm just using the Roland DP10. That all, that's all I seem to need, and I get by on that just fine. But if you need more sophistication, we want that and an expression pedal at the same time. Uh, you might either want to go into another board or get the furniture style stand and look at the pedal board, the three pedals that come with that, because you can program that to do whatever you want it to be. Just for kicks, I wanted to compare this against the FP60X and let's see what the difference is. Compared against the FP60X, it has the Supernatural pianos, but it does not have Zen Core. So we got a plus right away on this, the FPE50, because it has both that and Zen Core. They both have 256 note polyphony, which is really cool. The FP60X has only 358 tones versus the 1018 that this has. The FP60X has a more solid frame to it. Basically, it's metal and plastic, whereas this one is just plastic, which is cool, brings the weight down a little bit too. Now, both have the same action, the PHA4 standard, uh, but it just kind of feels a little bit more rigid in the FP60X than it does in this, and I think that could be, be attributed to having metal as part of its frame instead of just plastic. But either way, same key action, same action, just a little bit more rigid on the other one. Now the FP60X has upward facing speakers. This one has downward facing speakers. You know, not a big deal, but it might take a little bit of getting used to if you're used to the ones that fire upward. It does fill up the whole room with sound, so I don't think you're going to be disappointed with that. So for a small coffee shop or for a living room performance, you're fine. Anything more than that, you'll probably want to bring an external amplifier or PA to plug into. Now, the FP60X does have that DP10 pedal that I was referring to, so that's kind of a plus. This one, it's optional. And again, you got sampling modeling on both, but again, this also has synthesis with the Zen Core. And this FPE50 also has arranger functions like the chord sequencer and the accompaniment and interactive mode. We're going to get through all of that stuff. Now, we went through the back panel. Let's go through the front panel. Very quick overview, and then we're going to get more in depth into the whole thing. So, on the front panel up here, you'll notice right away on the left, we have two wheels here. We've got wheel one and wheel two, which is basically pitch bend and modulation, pretty standard. To the next, uh, to the right of that, you have a button here that's called wheel mode. When you press it, these take on different functions, and the functions that it takes on is whatever you program to be. So that is really cool. You can change the function of this to be pretty much anything. We'll get into more detail on that in a little bit. Well, actually, let's do it right now. Pitch bend. And you can, of course, program it to say how much of a bend you want. Um, you can have an octave. But this is just two whole notes, I believe, or two half notes two half notes and then modulation so when you're in wheel mode it changes the function of this and if I hold wheel mode 
Then we go to the wheel setting and you can see all the different uh, things that you can assign to these wheels. Um, right now it's set to assignable. You can change it to pitch band mod or assignable. When we get down lower, you can change the LEDs on there. Yeah, there's LEDs on this. And right now, it's assigned to Arranger Beat. So if I were to turn the Arranger on, you can see these, they're lighting up according to the beat. Okay, or I can change that to Always On, like the way it is right now. Or I can turn it off altogether. No, it'll never come on, never light up. So I kind of like that arranger beat thing. That's kind of nice, a little extra touch. And the bend range right now, it's at, at two. And let's see, I think you can go up to 12. Ooh, you can go up to 24. How cool is that? That's a full two octaves. So I'm at, if I'm at 24, And of course, anything between zero and 24. Okay, now let's just put that back into two. All right, now, wheel one and wheel two, as you see here, we can change it. Right now, the function is set for activity level when you have the wheel mode thing lit up, uh, but there's other things. So we've got a ranger, whoops. But there's other things. So we've got Arranger Hold, Base Inversion, Layer, Modulation, Pitch Bend, Off. And let's see, on the other side, we've got Rotary Speed. And that's pretty much it. So you can go ahead and change Wheel 1's function to any of those I just showed you. And down here, you can have it apply to right and left. That means if you have the keyboard split, it'll affect both the right and left parts. Or you can make it just the right or just the left. All right. Now you come down here to Wheel 2. And you got a similar thing, the same kind of thing. This is, you can have it for the accompany part volume. So we have a split or you have an accompaniment. So you can have it for a company part volume. So when you have an accompaniment, you can change the volume there. You can have it for bass part volume, drums part volume, activity level, arranger hold, bass inversion, expression, layer, modulation, bend down, bend up, and off. And then mic effects format, rotary speed, accompany part volume, bass part volume, brum, and so on, activity level. And again, what do you want to apply it to left and right or right or left, okay? So right away already, I've only talked a few minutes about this, but now you can see how powerful this wheel mode is. So we're gonna turn that off so we just have default wheel one and wheel two, pitch bend and modulation. So moving on on the top panel, we have five sliders here, or faders, whatever you wanna call them. First is master volume. That controls the master volume of everything. In other words, the next four are four different volume controls, but the master controls everything. It'll bring all of these down or all of these up, depending on what you have. Now, the next four, again, are for separate things, separate volume or gain controls. We've got the keyboard.
Okay, then there's accompaniment. So when we're playing with an accompaniment, we can control its volume. So right away we have volume controls for the keyboard and for the accompaniment. Very cool, right? The next one is song volume. Now, song comes to over here when you have a USB stick or memory or whatever plugged into here, or if you're using internal memory, you're playing back a song. That will can control the volume right here with that. And the last one, this has a microphone that you can, I mean, it has a microphone input. So if you're using a microphone, you have the mic gain control right here. Okay, right now I have it all the way down because I do have I do have a mic plugged into there, but I don't want to hear it yet. Not until I get to that part. So we have it down. That way yeah, you don't hear anything. This section right here, one touch piano, no matter where you're at, you hit one touch piano, you are back to piano. That's their concert piano. <laughs> Next to that is ambience, and that's Roland's word for reverb. So when you have ambience on, your reverb is on. If you want to go ahead and change the settings for the reverb, you hold the ambience. Now, a lot of these buttons here, you can hold them or long press them, as Roland calls it, to get to a more detailed menu where you can make adjustments. Now, the ambience. Here's the different parameters, the ambient switch, which is basically on and off. Ambience type, I've got it set for concert hall, but you can have it for lounge, studio, or cathedral. Right? And of those, you can control how much ambience you want from the keyboard. I have mine set at five. And you also have your mic ambience here too. So if you're having a microphone, you can go ahead and set how much ambience you have there. All right, next is split slash dual. And it's a little bit different naming convention because other keyboards, they'll call it split, but instead of dual, they call it layer. So dual here means the same thing as layer on most other keyboards. So if I'm playing something, Now, that's just piano, and if I go ahead and split, and I've already pre-chosen a bass here. All right, so <laughs> that sounds a little bit better than just piano for the whole thing, and for those of you, you might recognize that as the weekend's blinding lights. And if I hit the split dual again, now I've got a layer. So whatever two sounds I've chosen, I've got those two spread across the entire keyboard. And we hit it again, we're back to just piano or whatever pre-selected sound you have. So with that, let me just jump over to the LCD display and we're gonna show you what you're looking at here. So right now it says the scene you're looking at is disco pop. You can change the scene here by pressing on scene. And it's disco pop. And you can go through all kinds of, when you get to a scene you want, like um, acoustic 8 beat, all right? Let's hear what that sounds like. A little slow. So you hit enter and you can see that you are now in an acoustic 8 beat. Let's go ahead and change it back to where we were. Disco pop just to keep things simple but there is a lot of scenes over here. 
as I mentioned, there's um, 256 user scenes. So you have 256 different slots or places to put your own scenes into, in addition to all the ones that are already on here. So keeping it at Disco Pop, now we look and we see tone and we see style. All right. This is where you can choose the tone and the style. And there's 107 different preset styles here. Um, for auto accompaniment, there's 177 preset styles. So right now, the tone, you see that little triangular thing? You can see it move as I press the down button. Okay. So right now it's set for concert piano. If I hit enter, these are the different pianos I have because the scene or the category is acoustic piano. And if you look at these, the first two letters, it tells you what kind of sound you're looking at. SN is supernatural. So everything that starts with SN is supernatural. Supernatural concert piano. Ballad piano. Bright piano. Mellow. Piano performer. Rock piano. Ragtime piano. Dynamic JD piano. And you'll notice those are not starting with SN. This starts with PR. And the PR stands for preset. So these are not supernatural. It's using a sound engine that's not supernatural. It's sampled. So... That's the dynamic JD piano. Here's a magical piano. And piano string layer. Piano one. And again, that starts with something else yet, CM. And CM stands for common. So we've got three different sound types already, just looking here. Supernatural, preset, and common. Piano 1W. have time to go through everything but as you can see there's a lot here here's one piano with a core and here's piano with a different pads and here's a piano with a delay So that's how you get the piano. So let's back up a sec. Right now we're looking over here and we see the scene is disco pop. And over here you see the tone. You see that, that triangular, that black type triangular thing that tells you what has the focus. I can move that down here to the style category, which is pop. If I hit enter, these are the different style categories available to me. Go back and I move it down here to the preset 001 disco pop. I hit enter. 
I can change it to any of these. And there's, there's a lot more. So basically, on the main screen, you're looking at... Let's bring that triangle up. Acoustic piano is the category. And SN001, Supernatural. Concert piano is the piano I've chosen within that category. All right. And again, just for review, style is pop, and the selection within the style is disco pop. And down at the bottom, you have even more information. Uh, 115 is your beat, four quarters, uh, and so on and so forth. Now you can see the speaker volume is off. I have that off. And Bluetooth is, is lit. Um, so... I'm not using Bluetooth right now, but it is available. All right, and the last thing is you see A right here? Well, whatever chords I'm playing, there's an F, there's a G, G, C, G diminished seven. <laughs> so whatever chords you're playing, Which is really cool because if you're not up on chord names and your guitarist wants to know what chords you're playing, just play the chord and read it off to them. It's that simple. All right, so that explains what you're looking at in this LCD display as far as just having a single tone chosen at a time. Next category is E piano or electric piano. So you can see up here, just by pressing on that, I've changed that to E piano one. And that is the tone category. And it is preset 008 70s suitcase. Okay, so in Again, if I hit enter, I can change whatever sound I'm looking for. That was the 70s suitcase. Here's a light tine. I could probably do the same thing with that. And there's a few different ones that would also be satisfactory for that particular song. It's up to you which one you want to use. Here's a, a, a whirly vibrato. Here's a phaser. And there's so much you can do there. Here's a detuned electric piano. Vintage electric piano. Sixties electric piano. There's a lot of things that you could use for that song. And again, I no time to go through everything, unfortunately. Over a thousand sounds built in here. So anyway, you get the idea. Now, here's the other thing. Instead of choosing here, you can see I'm in the electric piano category because I hit electric piano. All right. You can see that there's also left and right arrows available. So if I go to the right, I go to the next category or subcategory, actually, electric piano two. This just lights up electric piano, but we have electric piano one and two categories, each with their own sounds. If I go over again, now I get to solo strings and you can see strings button is lit up.
And within strings, you can see we have all of these in here for the string category. Okay, and that was a violin. Here's a slow violin. Anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. All right, and then there's cellos. Contrabass. Fiddle. Okay. And again, if I go over to the right, I am in the next category or subcategory because I'm still in the strings category. And with that, I have rich strings. Full strings. Decay strings. Strings pizzicato. Anyway, you can see the harder you play it, you have that pizzicato, the softer, it's more a regular string. So you gotta get used to which one you want and play it that way or a combination of both. The versatility here is just amazing. Character strings. Chamber. And there's probably better choices to do that song with. Small strings, hybrid strings. And I could sit here and play with all these sampling different ones and trying them out. There's so much here. So anyway, let's go to the right again and the next category is E organ and you can see that that organ slash pad button has lit up so here's a, a B B3 a distant B organ Percussion. Full drawbar. Lower on upper and <laughs> there's just so much here. I can't get, possibly get into everything, but hopefully you're getting a, a little bit of a feel for what this is like. And again, we're going to go to the right again. Now we're on pipe organs. It's a soft pipe organ. Positive organ. Classical organ. Grand organ. Church organ. And 
that doesn't sound right. Let's try another one. All right, that sounds a little better, but there's so many variations. Puff organ. All right, again, go to the right. Now I've got reed organs. Go to the right again. Now I'm into a synth pad slash string. Heaven, New Jupiter. Anyway, for a full thing on more of what these sounds sound like that are built in, there's other videos out there. And again, I barely touching the surface as, as far as sounds go. I want to give you more of an overview of the entire board. So and there's a lot here. We go to the right again here. We got Fantasia. Dreaming Harp. Bell. Go to the right again. Here's a trance touch. This is a synth poly key. Another one. Analog saws. Super saw. And again, there's probably better ones, but just to give you an idea of what we can do with Nice. Go to the right again. We've got an elegant harpsichord. Play an old harpsichord. And just to see how it sounds different, here's a coupled harpsichord. All right, go to the right again for the next category. We got clavinet. Clav with a phase. You hear that phaser on there. Now let's go to the next category, a Celesta. Next category, accordions. Next category, blues reed, harmonica, and a harmonica. Next category, bells, church bell. Having a lot of fun with this Tinker Bell, Tinkle Bell. All 
A go-go. What's that? Okay. Next category, fine marimba. Glockenspiel. Vibraphones. And again, the purpose is not just to show you all the tones it's got. You already know it's got a lot. But I wanted to show you an overview, so I wanted just, just a couple of more. Acoustic guitar. And again, this is all in the other category. So these are presets. And then we got common. a nice 12 string. All right, quickly, electric guitar. Next category, distant guitar or just uh, ah, distortion guitar. Overdrive, uh, acoustic bass. All right, does this ever end? Plucked stroke. Orchestral. How many more are there? Ensemble brass. There's just so much. I want this to end. Flute. Okay. Saxophone. Recorder. Vox, choir. <laughs> Cat voice. Scats. This wouldn't be a rolling without a scat voice in there. <laughs> so cool that scat voice. Then they have Jews, Jazz Scat. That, the first one was a Jazz Scat layer. This is just a Jazz Scat. Let's see what the difference is. So if you press it lightly, you get the Jews. Harder, you get Baz. And when you do it really hard, you get that bow where it goes down. Here's a Jazz Scat with a W after it. Synth lead again. I'm waiting for this to end. There's just so many categories: synth brass, synth effects, uh, 
synth sequence and pop hits sound effects okay seashore and that should change in pitch yeah the lower I go same thing with the rain Thunder. Thunder delay. Wind. Stream. Oh, that's nice. Sounds relaxing just holding that. Bubble. is cool. Anyway, you get the idea. I just wanted to show you just there's so much I can't possibly go through it. And again, we got off into a tangent. We were showing you this section of the board where you have the different category buttons, piano, electric piano, strings, organ slash pad, and other. And I just showed you how to get to all of those by moving the right and left arrows over here once you're into something. So let's say you're back in the piano category. <laughs> You've got your concert piano, and the category is acoustic piano. So you use your right again to get to the next category, and again, and again, which is what I just did, so you can see how much there was. And you can go backwards and forwards and so on and so forth. And again, you want to change the category quicker. Um, you want to go from piano to organ instead of hitting right, 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 right all the time to get to the next categories. Just hit organ pad. Now we're up to the E organ over here. So let's just keep it at piano. All right, moving on, scenes. A lot of uh, Roland's instruments are scene-based, which is really cool. So the RD-88 is scene-based. The Phantom series, the newer one, is also scene-based, which means every change you make, whatever it is, you find whatever sound you want, you tune it, or you, you make all the changes you want to get it to sound perfect. You add ambience. Maybe you'll add something else. Maybe you'll do individual notes being tu uh, tuned or whatever. Everything you've done basically now is a scene and you can save it as a scene. And if you like what you've done, you can take that scene and bring it into another piano. Or if you've created it on another piano that has scenes, a Roland piano like the Phantom or the RD-88, you can save that and bring it into here. You're not limited to just single things. Um, you have three sounds at once on the RD-88, more than that on the uh, Phantom. So it opens up a whole new world for you. So when you hit scene, this is your scene list. You can get to all kinds of stuff. And again, like before, you can see we're in Disco Pop and we've got all these other things here. And like we've seen before, this is preset. If I go to the right, I get to the user scenes. Right now, nothing's used, but I have, I believe, 256 different locations for user scenes. So whatever I do, I find something, I 
find a scene I like, make some changes, and it's uh, even better than what that initial scene was. This is where I go ahead and save it. You hold the scene button down, and then it will prompt you to write the scene out. So, again, presets and user scenes. Now comes accompaniments. This is really cool. So accompaniment, right now it's off. If I start and stop or press start, I'm basically getting a drum pattern here. Turn the accompaniment on. Now we've got some other stuff happening over here. All right. Variation, this is variation one. If I hit two, I get a little bit more complex of a fill. Go back to one and ending it. Okay, now instead of just hitting start right away, I can hit sync start. That means it's not going to play until I hit my first note. So that's a company, but you can go ahead and long press accompaniment, and now you have all kinds of parameters to change this to. You got the accompaniment switch, obviously it's lit up so it's on. Chord detect, I have it for pianist mode. There's other modes, we'll get into that in some future video maybe. Uh, split point, of course, where the split point is. Now it doesn't matter if you're in split mode or not. We need a split point, so when it goes ahead and does chords, when you're playing chords, it's going to be anything to the left of the split point is what it's looking for, and it's going to go and accompany you based on the chords that you're playing. All right. And then there's bass inversion, arrange your hold, auto fill in. Now the intro type and ending type, you can have it short or you can have it a little bit longer. Up to you. Activity level, we can change that as well. Let's exit that. Then there's interactive mode. And this is a little cool. We'll hold it and you can see you can change a little bit of the things going on with interactive mode. But basically, let's keep it the way it is. Now, interactive mode is basically, well, let's show you. Now, watch what happens when I play harder. It increases the volume and also increases the complexity. Now, I want to slow that down. I'm not really doing much, so it's not doing much. And again, this, this might be a little loud, so I can I can adjust the accompaniment volume here, like I showed you in the beginning. Of course, there's variations. Cool stuff. Now there's a chord sequencer, and we can turn that on. Um, here's a chord pattern list let's stick with disco pop and we're going to turn that on and we're going to go ahead and play that all right so let's keep it at disco pop we have this on and i'm going to hold this so that you can see the chords here and I can move around this chord chart anywhere I want. So wherever I put it, that's where it's going to start from. Right now it says intro short, and it's in C, and then it's going to go here and play. Let's check it out.
So anyway, you can see what's going on. Let's stop that. And you can actually zoom in if this isn't good enough for you. We can see decrement and increment at the same time as zoom. So let's see. Yeah, so now it's, uh, yeah, it's just one at a time. So that's really cool. Now you can go ahead and change these. You can do whatever you want, create your own chords. And I believe, I'm not sure if it does it quite yet, but in the future it is planned for, you can create your own, say with Excel or another spreadsheet thing. Export it as a comma separated value uh, file, CSV. And this will read it in with your USB stick that you wrote it to. And you can read in your own chord arrangements that way. Very, 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 very cool. So, so far we've covered this part of the keyboard. Now, this, you've seen me use this throughout the video. So, basically, up, down, left, right. Uh, increment and decrement changes the value. Let's exit that. Exit and enter, self-explanatory, and exit when you're into a menu system basically means previous menu. So if you keep hitting exit, you'll eventually get to the top level menu. Speaking of menus, we hit the menu key by itself. And here you have different menu things you can get to. Bluetooth is one of them. So if we go to that here, we have Bluetooth pairing, you, you can set pairing with whatever device you have, iOS or Android. Um, the Bluetooth switch, of course, it's on, but you just do that here. Then there's Bluetooth ID. So if you're pairing this with one device, you don't have to worry about the ID. But if you want to set another device or a third device to work with this, you just go ahead and increment this to the next value, Bluetooth ID 1, and it'll pair with the next device, and so on and so forth. So if you have three, four, five different devices, you just make a unique ID for each one. That way you can use whichever one you happen to want to use. Very cool stuff here. Next thing is input volume, and as I mentioned, there's a eighth inch stereo input, which you can use as a line input or an aux input. And this is where you control the volume of it right here, as well as the USB volume and the Bluetooth volume. So rather than having sliders on the outside, it's over here. And you can change the, the volume level here from one to 10, I believe it is, for each one of those. Piano designer, we went through that earlier. Remember? And scene edit, this is where you can edit your scenes, the different parameters to each scene, scale, tuning, split setting, dual setting, wheel setting, pedal setting, basically everything in a scene that you might want to change, you can do that right here. Chord sequencer, we just went through that. Now, this is kind of good and bad, the system. Let me exit out of here to show you something. Okay, if you want to change the key feel, the key action, that's one of the first things I like to do whenever I get a new piano, is change the key action. Whether I want it harder or softer or whatever. And most pianos will give you a choice of, let's say three things like light, normal, hard. Some will go light one, light two, normal, hard one, hard two. This one gives you one to a hundred, so you've got a perfect way to control exactly how much or little key action you want. You want it harder or lighter. But here's the thing that I don't like. In order to get to that, you have to press menu. You have to know that it's in the system menu. And then from there, you go to general and you can see the key touch. It's the third thing from the top. I've got it set to 39, but like I said, you can go all the way to um, 100 or 1 or whatever. But what I don't like is, unless you know right off the bat, you're going to have to look this up in a manual. But now that you've seen me do it, now you know to change the key action, you have to hit menu 
and go into the system menu and then general and here you go now let's go through this general menu auto off meaning right now it's off but if you want it to turn itself off you can say you can have it off in 10 minutes without activity no activity for 10 minutes this thing will turn itself off next setting is 30 minutes then 240 minutes which is four hours so that's your choices up to four hours without activity it'll turn itself off maybe you only want 30 minutes maybe you only want 10 minutes right now i have it off altogether so it's not going to turn itself off unless i hit the power and power it off myself then there's display contrast which gives you how bright or uh, dim the screen is it's usually set for five but i thought with the uh, the screen being captured by the camera seven would have been an ideal setting and that's what i'm using for that right now of course local control if you've got this hooked up to a computer and you don't want to play the sounds that are in here you want to play what's on your computer you just turn local control off you don't get anything but it will send your keystrokes to your computer master tuning we're at 440 they have some other choices uh, scene bank and this is at startup you can choose which scene bank and scene number you want okay and you can have it from the preset or the user uh, banks all right that was general then there's sound when you go to sound you've got your headphone ambience hammer response speaker switch and so on and so forth a speaker eq is a good one if you have this on a stand keep the setting to stand Otherwise, put it on desk. So if you're at a desk, it's probably against a wall. This will set the EQ for desk and it'll sound better. All right, next one is the equalizer. So for equalizer, that's this own section here. Let's go into here. And you can see, you can set your equalizer. You've got low, mid, and high. And if we move this down here, uh, let's go to load as we increase this you'll see you've got a bar graph here and mid Let's just put them all back to zero right now. I want to show you something else. You can change the frequency for low, mid, and high where you want it to act on. And you can also change the Q value. So very cool. That's the equalizer right here in a nutshell. Metronome should be self-explanatory. We've got it on four fourths. Um, and we're going to emphasize on the downbeat. The pattern, you can choose the pattern here. Um, according to these uh, however you want to set it the volume and what kind of tone you want it set for a click you can have an electronic or voice and so on then there's song utility okay you, this is where you rename and copy songs and all that stuff then there's utilities where you back up everything restore import export And then, of course, what version you're using. I just upgraded this to version 1.11. Upgrades on the uh, firmware are free, of course. All right. Now we went through the menu, all that kind of stuff. And we're slowly moving to the rest of the right. Metronome and tempo. We can actually, you can do tap tempo as well. I'm going to skip these because that's obvious. Song mode, all right. And when you're in the songs, this is the song volume level right here. Now, for recording, I'm going to hit record, all right? And when I start playing, it's going to record.
stop that, play it back. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna hit record again, and now, notice since I've already recorded something, I have something here called recording mode. If I keep it at new, I'm going to get a new recording and it's going to give it a new file name. But instead of doing that, I'm going to move this to overdub. So now watch what happens. It's going to play it back, but I'm going to record what I'm playing over it too. Play that back. So that's really cool. You can do what I just did and come up with a song like that. Or you can use this in a more practical way, like if you're recording yourself, you're learning a new song, you can start with recording the left hand. And when you're done with that, play back the left hand while you're playing the right hand along to it. Great way to learn new stuff. And there's something here on the right called Center Cancel. Also cool. So if you have a song playing on a USB stick or whatever, and they're singing, you hit can Center Cancel, and it's going to do a pretty good job of removing the vocals. That way you've got just the the music just the song so you can go ahead and add your own voice or play along with it or use it as a karaoke type of thing but it's really cool now mic effects and this is the volume for the mic now the mic input over here is actually a quarter inch professional mics use these three pronged it's called XLR so it's nice to be able to have a professional mic this is a, actually a, a sure SM57 most popular mic in the world you'd be hard-pressed to find a studio any in the anywhere in the world that doesn't have at least one or two of these so what I have is a cable that it's XLR on one end at the other end is a quarter inch to plug into here so it's basically an adapter or converter cable so keep that in mind it will work with any dynamic mic won't work with a condenser mic because that needs phantom power which this does not supply but dynamic is great and of course i wouldn't be holding this i'd have it on a mic stand somewhere and if you listen right now let's increase the volume i'm set for basically reverb and you can hear that in my voice there and that's what most singers are going to be doing anyway but if you if you, you know, yeah here we go you hear it a little better now if you long hold the mic effects button now you can see what kind of different um, effects you have right now this says harmony testing one two three four ah, it's harmonizing with me there's voice transformer. Whoa, <laughs> listen to that. Isn't that cool? Vocal designer. Not sure what that does, but you can play around with all these different effects uh, settings and change that within. And that's basically it. Harmony, voice transformer, and vocal designer. But there's a lot more to it than that. That's just showing you the main things, the effects type. Then there's... Mic ambience, how much do I want? This is a basically reverb, so it looks like I have from one to 10, and this is down to zero, so shouldn't be any. And as I increase it, you'll hear more and more and more. And you're hearing harmony because I have the harmony thing set as well. Let me turn that off, actually. Okay, test one, two, good, all right. But basically, that's what you're looking at. Let me go ahead and just turn that back. Test one, two. <laughs> Test one, two. All right. So that's the ambiance. And then you have these other things. For the duet level, you can change what kind of harmony level you have. 
the direct level, the chorus send, and then you have a compressor, which is also cool. Test one, two, three. Let's turn it on. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. That's with it on. Compressor on. Compressor off. So it gives you that extra boost. Then type. Yeah, the compressor type. You can have it as a hard, normal, or soft. That's to give you some kind of level for your compression. And then there's a noise suppressor. You can turn that on or off. You're getting a lot of noise. Make sure to turn that on, and you can set the threshold for how much noise you want to cut out. You don't want to cut out too much, because if you do, it's going to go ahead and take an effect on your voice. You're going to cut out some of that, too. It won't sound quite as good. And that's basically it. In a nutshell, let's turn the mic off. All right. So, anyway, again, play it as a piano, have split and dual, basically split one thing on the bottom, something on the top, or use the whole thing to layer, use accompaniments for one-man bands type of stuff, use the vast 1,018 different uh, sounds that are built into here so that you can use it as a stage piano. It's basically a multi-purpose piano it is so cool for 999 dollars that's what gets me 999 us dollars and i better say as of this recording because i'm not sure how much how much longer they're going to be able to maintain this price if they do great but this really gives you a lot of bang for your buck it's it's worth it for $999. So the FP30X that they had before this, well worth going up to the uh, the Roland FPE50. Uh, the FP60X, both of those, I would think, the 30 and the 60, if you're considering one of those, you might want to reconsider to this, but it is 37 and three quarter pounds. So I'm not sure where that is for you, but that's a pretty nice size if you're looking at the, the Nord stage pianos or the Nord um, piano. You're looking at 40 pounds, but then again, it's got a metal case. It's heavy. This is lighter than that, so that's what I'm gauging this on because the Nord I can handle at 40 pounds, and this at 37 and 3 quarter pounds, I can handle that too. I think most people would be able to handle this. So that's it, and I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you're interested in purchasing this, check the links in the description. Uh, there's links for Amazon, b &H. I do make a small commission on that. So uh, if you do like the video, hit the thanks button, thumbs up, all that. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.